Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. A newfound exploit in Windows NTFS implementation will crash the machines by simply including a short string within an image on a website. A French school is using facial recognition to find out whether students to find out when students aren't paying attention. A newfound malware on Android devices could be on your phone, and Intel has already surpassed AMD's Threadripper. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston, yeah, man. you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories for the week of May 31st, 2017. It's been a bad month for Windows 7 users. The widespread WannaCry ransomware hit a ton of Windows 7 machines, and now a new bug has been discovered that will slow down and crash Windows 7 and Windows 8. The bug allows a malicious website to try and load an image file with the dollar sign and MFT name in the directory path. Windows uses dollar sign MFT for special metadata files that are used by NTFS file system and Windows 7 and Windows 8 fail to handle this directory name correctly. The bug has been tested on a Windows 7 PC with the default Internet Explorer browser. Using the file name c colon slash dollar sign MFT slash 123 in a website image, the test caused the machine to slow down to the point where you have to reboot in order to get it working again. Some machines may even blue screen eventually as the file system locks to that file and all other apps are unable to access files. The strange bug doesn't affect Windows 10 users and it's similar to an old problem in Windows 95 and Windows 98 where references to C colon slash con slash con would crash a machine. The NTFS bug appears to have been discovered early last week and has been reported to Microsoft. It's not clear when Microsoft will deliver a fix for the problem, but it affects Windows Vista, which is unsupported, Windows 7 and Windows 8 machines. Wow. That's... Do we want to like see how easy it is for someone to compromise yes. this? In like two seconds flat, I'll just show you what we're talking about here. So I'm going to go to our website, category5.tv. All right. So on our website, you see, let's say our logo up at the top here, right? So if I inspect that, you can see that that is image class default logo. And then there's this file, https colon cdn.zechariah.com slash image slash v7, blah, blah, blah. That's our actual logo. So what they're saying is, is by simply replacing that string that is our logo URL with this simple C colon slash dollar sign MFT slash whatever, it will actually bring this system to a halt. Unbelievable that it's just being discovered now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then again, who would think to do that? Who would think to do it? But now that it's known and not patched... Right. So Any, can it just to see. Anyone can put that onto a website. It's just an image tag. So right. Sasha was asking, okay, well, do I need to click on it? Do I need to do anything yeah. in order to have that exploit happen? Remember that question? Yeah. And no. The answer is no. It's just like when you go to our website, there's our logo. It shows up. You didn't have to click on it to have it all of a sudden load on the screen. Now, 
I guess the initial question that most people would think of is, why would you make your website something that crashes people's computers? Because you're malicious? Right. Specifically because you're malicious? Why do websites distribute malware? Well, exactly. But what I'm wondering is, could somebody theoretically take this and say, you know what, I'm going to put this code in my image so that nobody can steal my image, and if they do, it crashes their no, it's site. Not, it's, not an, it's not part of the image. Mm -hmm. It's in the image tag that tells it where the location of the image file is. I get that, but you couldn't throw that, like, because I know a lot of times you get websites will link to other images. Could you put that in there? You no, because then I guess it would crash from your site, too. No, he, Oh, yeah, you, it would crash your site. You could, yeah. someone could hide it through JavaScript. Right. Someone could make it so that a legitimate image becomes this string if the user right. has a certain criteria. They could have it detect if the user is using Windows 7 and they are located in Barrie, Ontario through geolocation, change the logo to this string right. and therefore crash their computer. Right. So they could do that, yeah, hmm. through JavaScript. That would be easy enough. Wild. Oh. Mm -hmm. It is crazy. Do you have better news for us? I do. Well, it depends on if you're a student. <laughs> <laughs> A business school in Paris will soon begin using artificial intelligence and facial analysis to determine whether students are paying attention in class. The software, called Nestor, will be used in two online classes at the ESG Business School beginning in September. LCA Learning, the company that created Nestor, presented the technology at an event at the United Nations in New York two weeks ago. The idea, according to LCA founder Marcel Sausset is to use the data that Nestor collects to improve the performance of both students and professors. This, the software uses the students' webcams to analyze eye movements and facial expressions and determine whether students are paying attention to a video lecture. It then formulates quizzes based on the content covered during moments of inattentiveness. Professors would also be able to identify moments when students' attention waned, which could help to improve their teaching. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. I was wondering it's where this was going, and I was thinking, you know, what's to stop them from having it running in the background and just be watching a YouTube video? Right. But then, uh, and what is still to stop them? Because they may be attentive to that, but because it quizzes them. Right. Something you said there is interesting, though. It it quizzes them on the questions that were covered during the moments of unattentiveness. Yes. So very smart. Super sneaky. So if the system, the AI, thinks, oh, they're not paying attention right now, generates a list of questions. How smart, how smart is the AI? If you get those dollar store glasses that look like those really big open eyes, could you just nap with your... Considering you can like break into two-factor authentication with a picture. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I guess so. Right? Yeah. Wow, I, I, that, that well, guy's watching really your attentive. Eyes, it's watching your eyes, so you've got to... But people would learn. It's like the lie detector test and people who have been trained to overcome it. Mm -hmm. You Couldn't you just like learn to be like right. just thinking about stuff and just... It's like what you're doing right now. But the, the <laughs> first question that comes to my head is, are these tests gradable? And if so, does that then in turn create a legal liability where somebody... I don't even know if that's the intention though, Jack. No, maybe not. But like, imagine rolling this out at, say, a law school. Sure. And right. they go, so... Right, right, right. But this, we're going to test, test you on this stuff. The test is not... Fail. It's not an examination. No. It is, did, did this lesson sink in right like if i could go back over tonight's episode and quiz you on the things that you you know w went like this while it was happening or the kids ran into the room and distracted you and then i quizzed you on that it would be a oh i need to learn that because i it it calls you on it but does it factor in things like 90 percent of what you hear doesn't be get retained i'm sure right it would, yeah yeah I just, I, I'm okay with this in the classroom. I would be really That's upset it. if they brought this into the workplace or into my home yeah. life. Well, exa exactly. <laughs> Husbands everywhere are going, yes, dear. Oh, crap. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> Don't bring it into the house, folks. Don't bring it in. Uh, really interesting idea, though. I think as an educational tool. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. If it's, yes, if it's full stop. purely for the purposes <laughs> yes. of improving lesson plans or making things more dynamic, I could see that. But, sure. to, but does it factor in or... Like, if a, somebody's know, burying Jeff. their head... I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm a questions guy. I, I like to question... You need to ask these everything. questions. I, I, I think back to an episode that we did a couple weeks ago where we looked at 
the sessions of our web viewer, viewers. Right. The users were on our website and we actually watched it like a video. And so by doing that, it gave us an opportunity to see, oh, that could be improved on our website. So could we then look back at our, our show if this was in the educational programming that was being watched? And you could watched see. And see, oh, well, you know, Henry's, how, Henry's fidgeting right now. So, you know, this is how, whatever I'm saying is really... How, how heartbreaking would that be, actually? Like, in, yeah, in, part, when the, you think about it, if you're the teacher, say we could see it, yeah. and you're like, oh, every time I talk, they look away. <laughs> every time I say something, they take a drink. <laughs> it, you know, you've become the drinking game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. A new malware called Judy is now infecting millions of Android smartphones globally, close on the heels of the WannaCry holding PCs at ransom. According to security solutions firm Checkpoint, the malware, Judy, uses infected devices to generate large amounts of fraudulent clicks on advertisements generating oh. revenues for the perpetrators behind it. The total spread of the malware campaign on Google Play, Google's official app store, may have reached between 8.5 and 36.5 million users, Checkpoint said in its blog. The auto-clicking adware, Judy, was found on 41 apps developed by a Korean company. However, it wasn't clear which countries have been impacted by the Judy malware. Some of, that, some of the apps that were infected, we discovered, resided on Google Play for several years, but all were recently updated. It's unclear how long the malicious code existed inside the apps, hence the actual spread of the malware remains unknown, it added. After Checkpoint notified Google about this threat, the apps were swiftly removed from the Play Store, said the blog. Well, that's good. <laughs> Intel has unveiled a new X-Series platform, up to 18 cores and 36 threads. AMD announced its new high-end desktop plat platform, HEDT, their 16-core 32-thread thre 32 thread ripper a couple of weeks ago. Now at Comp... Computex in Taipei, it's Intel's turn to update its HEDT platform, and it is one-upping AMD in the process. The Intel platform, consisting of the new X299 chipset and new X series processors, will go all the way up to 18 cores and 36 threads. The HEDT segment is aimed at gamers, video streamers, and content creators with deep pockets or an insatiable desire, more concurrent with more concurrent threads the mainstream processor segment has to offer. The value pr proposition for this segment is always a little skewed with the chips being as much prestige as much prestige parts as anything else. Straightforward gaming workloads may, may struggle to make full use of the chip's resources, but serious Twitch streamers, for example, can make good use of the extra cores. Software developers are another group that can make good use of, of all those cores. The Skylake X the Skylake X chips will also expand Intel's numbering system. Intel is adding a new i9 branding that slots in above the i7 branding for the high-end processors. Don't worry, there will be some entry-level X chips as well, starting with Intel's i5 line of processors. The 7640X boasts four cores and is under $250. The 8-core, 16-thread Intel chip costs $599, whereas AMD's corresponding par part is $499. The Intel chip does have twice as many memory channels, so it's not exactly like for like, but we'd expect that you'd be paying at least a little more for an Intel processor and an Intel motherboard than a roughly similar AMD system. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV Newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis.